Hi everyone and welcome to the first episode of Be Ready where we talk to people from all walks of life about mental health and well-being issues, what challenges they've faced, how they've dealt with them and advice they have for you. Our very first guest is Australian businessman, investor and sports enthusiast Jerry Ryan who is also the co-founder of Readiness. It has been a tough time uh, particularly for Victorians and Melburnians. What have you learned perhaps about yourself or about others during this, this really tough time of lockdown? For myself, um, you know, I've given me time to to step off the, the merry-go-round and uh, reflect. Um, mind you, I, I, every week I sit down and, and summarise uh, what I've done and where I'm heading, but unnecessary right. activities. And um, number one, that, you know, why do we do things? Uh, Mm -hmm. Secondly, that uh, it's been a great opportunity uh, to spend some time uh, um, and, and reflect uh, where you're heading. Um, we at Jayco and every other business I've got, we, we talk about the family, mm -hmm. and uh, it's important that uh, you know. And I've spent more time uh, with our staff. Uh, we have a factory at Jayco, which is uh, bigger than the size of the MCG. It's uh, seven thousand eight hundred steps. I do that three times a week just to say hello and wave and because it, it's so important to see people back, smiles on their face and it gives them a purpose. Uh, there's two, one, yes, there's financial uh, security. Uh, mm -hmm. We've certainly looked after our staff in all organisations, but secondly, to be able to uh, mix and talk and uh, we've had a couple of uh, you know, attempted suicides uh, and purely is they couldn't see themselves coming out of this. Uh, you know, one certain gentleman, uh, you know, his family's in Queensland uh, mm. and uh, he can't get to see him for Christmas. So. Mm. Uh, but I think that he will be able to and um, I've personally sat down with him and uh, a couple of other issues he had um, and show him the way out. And I always say, what you've got to do is just put everything on paper, take it out of your mind um, and, and analyze, you know, what are priorities. A uh, program like Readiness that uh, we, uh, I've invested in, and uh, we've been running at JCO uh, now for I think, uh, five months, six months. And it's amazing what the feedback we're getting, and, and uh, it makes us aware that, that one of our employees has an issue. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can sit down and hopefully uh, assist. I mean, I can only imagine the stressful and the tough times that as uh, as, a, as a business owner that you go through and that you, you have, have been through through your whole journey and your whole career. Have there been other times in your career that have challenged you as much as, as what we've been recently going through? No, um, definitely not. Uh... This has been the toughest financially, but also to see the staff suffering. Mm. It, it, it's out of their control and out of my control that uh, I can mm. do uh, something with it. But, um, you, know, you know, I would sit down twice a week when it first started, sit down with the staff and, and I'd be telling them the state of, you know, what the company was at and uh, their job security. It's all about communications and, you know, I spent the whole time going around the different organisations, talking to the staff, uh, trying to reassure them that, um, hey, I believe that we're going to come out of this, the company will be uh, secure, their jobs will be secure, and we're all in it together, let's stay positive as much as we can. If we've got a problem, put your hand up, we're here to help. Mental health. Uh, and well-being has, has always been an issue in, in the workplace. Uh, it, it seems to be becoming a growing and more concerning issue and in schools as well. Do you think that as people start to return to the office and as kids start to return to school, that we could see even more of an increase in, in, in mental health being an, an issue? Oh, very much so. We haven't seen what's under the surface. Uh, young children have got issues. You know, they've seen their parents, you know, they're probably strong people that they've never seen cry or an amount of domestic arguments. Uh, and that, you know, children are exposed to this. So 
I see some um, real issues and we've got to be on the front foot. And that's why uh, I'm a co-investor uh, in readiness is because I see this big issue and it came out of my young grandson got bullied in school uh, some nearly two years ago. And uh, you know, he went into his shell. Within two months, he lost all his hair. Um, and that's when I said, hey, you know, and I tried to talk to him about it. But, uh, um, and uh, so that's what I thought, well, we've got to do something about it. How can we monitor uh, how people are feeling from children to adults? Um, and that's what got me motivated. Let's talk about schools now then. Something like readiness within schools, how could it help in, in that kind of situation, do you think? Most kids won't talk about it. They won't write it down, but uh, given an iPad, they will. Um, mm -hmm. So if they're recording what, what uh, is happening in their daily life, uh, the parent will, will get to understand how they're feeling. More importantly, the teacher. And um, you know, a parent might have one, two or three or four children, but a mm -hmm. teacher where they've got um, uh, 25 in the classroom, uh, um, it's a bit difficult to try and analyse every child, but um, if you've got uh, data that's giving you some feedback, uh, it certainly assists and the parent and the teachers can uh, communicate uh, how the child is going. Absolutely, because it's that, it's that early intervention too is, is the key, isn't it? So that it, oh. so it doesn't get to that, that point where you know, like your poor grandson, it's, if you can see some early intervention there, then that's where the help can be provided early enough to really assist. Yeah, very much so, yeah. Um, and then you take that into the workplace uh, as a manager, um, that management can understand if, if, if someone's performance is off. Um, and, you know, we're doing it every day of the week. And, and our HR department's never been busier, just keeping an eye uh, uh, on one, their safety, in terms of COVID-19 safe, um, uh, plus uh, their mental welfare. I've never seen the amount of issues, uh, personally, it's not at work, outside of work, because of what's happened uh, in the last six months. That's right, and I mean, so now is really as good, good a time as any, isn't it, to, to implement something like the readiness program within the workplace, to as, as your workers are returning, to kind of get in there and, and get on top of things early. Is that is that how you feel? It de definitely, you know, people, um, you know, I always say people are your greatest uh, uh, asset in your organisation. You can put up factories, you can put up hospitality venues, but you, you need people, uh, good people, but more importantly, happy people. Do you think you've got a good work-life balance? I have, um, I've had to have that balance to uh, do the things I have in, in sports and theatre and other projects and uh, more importantly, spending time with my family and, and my friends. All right, well, Jerry, thank you so much for your time today. If everyone could be as, as positive as you, then we will, we will move forward very well through this. Well, I've got uh, one parting words as uh, my philosophy is out of every crisis comes opportunity. So true. Love it. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Mary. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed our chat. Make sure you tune into the next episode of Be Ready.